Hi, Statesman Nation. We're sitting down with Mark Benavidez of the football team as we preview the 2024 season. Uh, Coach, season's right uh, around the corner here. Um, but let's recap 2023, your first year here at, at William Penn. Um, the, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then we'll you know, yeah. slowly progress into this year. Yeah. Um, you know, finally got a full, full season under our belt. Um, you know, I think initially a big thing was simply setting a standard and expectations for our guys, um, understanding what we're trying to accomplish, not just on the field X's and O's, but also in the classroom and the community. Um, simply just being off the field, how we're going to act. Um, then on top of that, obviously, you know, getting established with schemes and culture and what we're trying to accomplish and um, having it to guys understand it's not just all about football. We've got a lot of things you want to do and make sure our guys are enjoying their, their experiences here at William Penn. Um, you know, looking back at the season, statistically a number of improvements from the year prior or seasons prior, um, you know, nowhere near where we wanted to be. Uh, you know, I've repeated a lot of, lot of close losses, but um, at the end of the day, it comes down to getting wins, you know, and, and um, you can claim all the moral victories you want with us having all those close losses, but at the end of the day, uh, four and six isn't where we want to be, and we knew that we were just simply a couple players, a couple plays away from being a lot more successful, and um, hopefully after that one year, uh, we've established ourselves to be closer to what our expectations are. Yep. Talk about this past year then in regards to, you know, the recruiting, being able to, to utilize 12 months of both re recruiting as well as retaining the athletes who you wanted to and, and building off uh, their previous success and them understanding better what William Penn football looks like now. So just, you know, so they're more ready for 2024. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, recruiting at the, at the end of the day, players win games. Uh, phrase we'll say is players win games, coaches lose games. So you got to make sure you can do whatever you can to put your players in a good position to be successful and simply get the best football players you can. Um, that doesn't necessarily just entail the most skilled or the most athletic. Um, you've got to make sure you've got the right type of student athlete to come to William Penn and, and make sure it's a good fit for them. But um, it was huge uh, for us, literally 30 hours after our last game, after we, we played Graceland, uh, most of our coaching staff were on flights um, to go recruit and look for certain guys. And um, Mid-year, we, we uh, were able to get some very good mid-year transfers for us that we think could be some key starters for us. We knew going into, going into last season that offensive tackle was a unique position that um, with the squad previously being triple option and, and where we kind of retained some guys, we needed some big guys at tackle that could protect the quarterback and, and keep our quarterbacks upright. And so that was a big thing, us getting a couple tackles um, from some junior colleges and then um, outside of that, you know, knowing that there's a certain type of person we're trying to get, not just uh, somebody who can barely be eligible, but ideally guys that are high academics, guys that could, uh, we know, be successful in the classroom. And uh, that was a huge, huge uh, thing we focused on. Um, offense and defense line, again, is, is the trench is how you win football games. We've got a lot of young guys that are coming in that um, are going to potentially be starters for us in their first season here at William Penn. And that's exciting to see kind of where they can grow. But on top of that, the retention, the, the guys we have on the squad, um, all last spring, it was a uh, gut check for a number of people and a wake-up call for a number of people. We wanted to make sure that we're pushing ourselves, um, that, again, guys are having fun, being successful, and working hard in the classroom, but on top of that, working hard on, on the field. And so um, we implemented some late-night Friday night lifts where our guys, you know, they knew we had just finished a season where we lost by eight points, three points, five points, two points to a number, number of different teams. Um, to where just a couple points or a couple plays away from being a seven, eight win football team. And so uh, every other Friday night at 1130, we'd warm up and work out for an hour, you know, where we know our peers, maybe they're going to a bar or party or having fun. We're out there grinding and, and putting some work in and, and building that brotherhood and that, uh, that family type atmosphere. And so um, again, where we're at right now, um, I would say it's night and day compared to a year ago. There's a lot of uncertainty a year ago and now uh, there's still uncertainty like there is every year, but our guys at least know what to expect from myself, from our coaches, from our scheme. Um, and as coaches, we know what to expect from certain players and we've seen them actually perform fine. Yeah. All right, let's talk about those players. Uh, let's start with like the skill players just as a whole group on, on offense and we can talk about the, the guys in the trenches and, and we'll move from there. Yeah, uh, just looking at our offense, um, like our two deep, vast majority of the guys are returning from a year ago, um, especially when it comes to skill guys. And so, uh, starting at the quarterback position, for example, Sterling Ramsey, he started almost every game last year. He started a number of games a year prior. Um, he's returning. Um, we've announced he's going to be the starting quarterback going into week one. However, um, our quarterback depth was a huge issue last year. 
and now this is probably the most depth I've ever had um, as a head coach to where uh, at, at that quarterback position to where I, we've got three different guys. I'd be extremely confident we could win football games at the quarterback spot. And so brought in a transfer. Um, we had also Francisco Beltran, who was a player for us last year that, was, that had an injury, was out for the entire season. Um, so those three guys are all going to be competing for a starting job. And um, I would not be surprised whatsoever to see all three of those guys taking snaps this year. At the running back spot, um, Des Loring was an all-conference performer. He's returning. Keegan Simmons, um, an older guy, a senior who's returning. Those guys are going to be predominantly one and two for us. And we have a couple of young guys potentially fighting for a, a number three spot. At receiver, again, we returned almost everybody from a year ago and brought in a ton, a, a ton of talented freshmen and talented young guys. Um, that is, without a doubt, going to be a room that's really by committee. Uh, we plan on moving guys around, getting a bunch of different personnel looks. Um, last year, we were somewhat limited in that position just simply because we, we were fairly demanding um, from a mental standpoint for what those guys got going on, what, what we require from them. And um, now all of our returners, they, they simply understand the ins and outs of the offense. And so um, that'll be a very interesting position to kind of see who ends up being the guy or not the guy. Um, we have high expectations for a guy like Amir Ellis, who, uh, excuse me, Amir Everett, who um, was one of our top receivers a year ago and had a really good spring and really good fall camp. Um, and then talk about the tight end position. Alex Price, who split a lot of time last year with some older guys, he's kind of you know the guy at tight end with Marcus Price behind him. Um, you know, I could see either one of those guys having some big games for us, and Alex potentially be another All Conference guy. Um, when it comes to offensive line, again, that's extremely important for us. Offensive tackle was somewhat of a liability at times last year. Um, and essentially, we were able to move our tackles from a year ago, Liam Bryant and Cam Carnes, to guard. And we signed new tackles, uh, Chris King and Adrian Ayala, two California JUCO guys that um, have really solidified some of those positions outside. Logan Myers, who's a consistent all-conference performer at center, uh, returns as well. And so, again, just looking from afar at the, at the two deep, um, at the offensive roster, a lot of – uh, familiar faces. A lot of guys have experience here compared to a year ago where everything was brand new for everybody. So really excited for it. All right. Uh, I know you don't know the defense as well, but I know you know them well enough to talk about them. So let's talk about that defense beginning with, you know, the line and then we'll go to the, back to the secondary. Yeah. So at defensive line, uh, a lot of new faces compared to a year ago. One of the best players on our team, um, he wasn't able to play last year, Lordoyas Garner. He transferred here from Avila with me. Um, he is a, he's a game-changing type player um, and a guy who had a tremendous spring, a tremendous fall camp. Then outside of that, uh, Malcolm Bryant, who um, started a good amount of games a year ago, had a good amount of production. He's a senior, going to be playing interior defensive line. And so a position that we kind of lacked at times last year was interior defensive line, at least at depth. And those two guys are, uh, are very good football players for us inside, which is going to be a big change. And then we have a bunch of young freshmen that um, – they definitely looked the part, some tall, lengthy guys, uh, athlete, a lot of athleticism that we're expecting big things from. And, and um, as a head coach or as a, as a coordinator, you're always kind of unsure about those 18-year-old kids. How are they going to react when the bullets are flying? But uh, some young guys like Sherman Johnson, Quincy Classius, um, Josh Barclay, um, just to name a few at defensive line. I mean, all those 18-year-old kids should get a lot, of, uh, a lot of reps and hopefully a good amount of production. Awesome. Uh, linebackers. Yeah, at linebackers, again, a lot of new faces. Um, last year, we had a, a, a lot of experience at inside linebacker. A guy like Harlan Plummer, he was here for a number of years, a first-team all-conference guy. It's hard to replace a person like him. Um, however, I would say collectively, we're probably a lot more athletic at linebacker compared to a year ago. We brought in a mid-year transfer, Sean White, um, from Texas, a guy that uh, is extremely athletic, who's, who um, early on kind of took a while to pick up on things, but he's, he's truly solidified his spot inside. And then we have some returners that were freshmen last year that have, that have had a good amount of production so far this fall camp. Brian Weatherspoon, um, Jerome Schubert, um, on top of some older guys like Blaine Morris, Damian Dover. Um, and so that's a position where we're going to have a number of guys rotate and play. Um, the thing that I'm excited for is just seeing the athleticism that those guys have displayed. And then an outside linebacker, uh, DQ. Uh, Johnson, who's going to be a senior, played a good amount for us, predominantly at safety. He's mostly playing outside linebacker for us now. Uh, and then also Cam Cummings, a true freshman from uh, Texas. He's been a phenomenal guy so far this fall. Um, really anxious to see those guys run around. And then at defensive back, um, 
we have almost everybody that was a starter last year or started games last year returning. So Howard Huerta, you know, All-American, 13 All-American guy for us. Uh, Donovan Brewer, the other safety, Mason Ford, um, uh, Deuce Young, Brandon Young, uh, and then Jeff, uh, Jeff Jones behind him, some other guys that have played behind him. And so that's a position that um, we lost a couple guys, but collectively all those guys have a good amount of game experience and have had pretty solid camps. And, um, yeah, excited for them. All right, uh, special teams. Can't forget those guys. Um, we got new kickers. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the kickers. Let's talk about the returners as well. Yeah, so um, specialist. That was a group last year, a lot of uncertainty coming into it. And we had a lot of major issues at snapping the football and being consistent to where at times as a head coach, we switched some things up with our punt team. Uh, we did some quick kicks on offense and we just simply went for it on fourth down or uh, go for two at times because of the uncertainty. Now, uh, Tommy Lagarde, who snapped some last year, he's done a phenomenal job all fall camp. Um, I mean, he's a guy that, especially on punt team, I could see him being a legit all conference long snapper that they have now. Um, so he's done a great job hoping to maintain that consistency when it comes to game times. Um, at actually kicking, Chris Paniagua right now looks like he's going to end up being our place kicker. And then Jose Hernandez will end up being our kickoff guy. Both those guys are true freshmen from, from the Houston area. And then Mason Ford, starting corner, will also be our starting punter. And he's a guy that's had a leg over the last years. We just haven't really used him at punter. And so, um, again, a lot of uncertainty there with some new faces. Um, don't be surprised if we are a little bit more aggressive at times on offense with us having a little bit more veteran offense now on, on some of that 30 yard line, are we going to go for it or not type thing. And um, that's something too with us where we, where we play our football games, it's extremely windy. Um, so depending where that wind goes, we might be very aggressive. We might be very conservative. And that's something that uh, those are just behind the scene head coach type decisions you got to make sometimes. Yeah. One of these days you guys will fundraise for like a really big windscreen or something. So right. Right. Get it. some oak trees out there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, many oak trees. <laughs> All right. Uh, returners too. Um, I think on the two deep, there was a lot of names I did not recognize. So it's some new faces uh, possibly returning the ball. Yeah. Um, Cam Muhammad um, is a transfer from New Haven. Very quick athletic guy. We've got a bunch of young freshmen that can absolutely just go. Brandon Powell, uh, Kalen Bursey, potentially, uh, potentially Amir Everett getting some, Von Bickham getting some. Um, we've, we're have we really excited at the end of the day when it comes to punt returns. we got to catch the punt. That's an issue we had a year ago. Um, but some of these guys, when they get the football in their hands, they can they can go move. Um, and so extremely excited for those guys, see what they can do, and, and uh, anxious to get those guys some opportunities here early on in the season. Awesome. All right, let's break down the schedule. We're not going to talk about every game here, but we do have just uh, just this week already. Game one, uh, William Woods. You got the Billy Bowl coming out of the gate. Uh, William Woods, first year program, first year obviously in the heart. Um, you know, talk about uh, you know the excitement of just getting it going, especially playing on a Thursday night. Yeah, you know, we had our new players report for camp on the 29th of July playing this game August 29th. So we have right at, right at one month of preparation for, for new players. Um, and so our guys are extremely excited and anxious to finally go against somebody else <laughs> other than other than a teammate, somebody who's not wearing a William Penn helmet or something, right? And so um, we're extremely excited just from that standpoint, regardless of who we're playing. But uh, going against a new opponent, a new opponent that's never had football, never played football, um, it's going to be extremely interesting. You know, this year we're able to have sideline technology and have iPads and stuff on the sideline, which is going to be extremely important for us because going into this game, we've got somewhat of an idea of things we might face, but we really have no clue. Um, we don't know what they are going to do on offense, defense, or special teams. And we just got a roster yesterday, and that kind of gives you some answers, but it also doesn't because a lot of these guys you've never seen in a college football game before. And so um, we're extremely excited for the game. At the end of the day, you know, a Thursday night kickoff here in Oskaloosa, um, I'm sure they're going to have a great crowd themselves. It should be a great atmosphere. Hopefully it's good weather. We'll see. Um, but it's, I, I couldn't ask for a better way to start the season. Um, you know, and so Julian Mendez, head coach, he's been at Ottawa University, been in a number of different places. So he's fairly familiar with myself and, and our staff of me being in the KCAC previously. Great guy. Um, extremely hard worker. I'm, I'm sure they've, they've got some very talented guys on the roster. And so for us, again, it's, it's going to be after, something where we're making adjustments on the sideline at halftime, whatever, and, and uh, hopefully we can get, get the job done. Um, moving on after that game, we've got back-to-back -back games against conference champions. So Benedictine um, at Action to Kansas, I believe it's on the 7th. Uh, and then after that, a home game against Baker. And 
both those teams um, going to be very tough. You know, last year lost to Benedictine, I believe, by a, essentially a field goal. Very close game. Um, they have almost their entire team returning. You know, we knew that uh, last year there wasn't enough production for us on offense, and, and that's a big reason why we wanted to get some of those tackles we have because they have a very talented defensive line and, and defensive front. Um, they have a couple coaching changes on defense, so there could be some uncertainty there in terms of scheme, but they're also playing this week zero, playing on Saturday, so maybe we'll get some film there. And then after that, Baker, um, you know, a team that we didn't play last year, but they were also a conference champion, and so um, it's going to be extremely – exciting for us to kind of see where we match up you know not having that film from a year ago but two years we, from my understanding William Penn played him somewhat close um, that's a earlier game than a lot of these other games so we'll also kind of see how the weather is like at at 11 11 30 in the morning compared to seven o'clock at night um, and then we have a bye week and then after that Graceland and conference play is starting so it is coming up you know really really soon the yeah. games that really really matter um, and that's another opponent where since we lost by, I believe, a touchdown or so a year ago, you know, I had a close one. And so um, our guys are truly anxious and ready. And, um, you know, that's something where, knock on wood, we're staying healthy. Our guys are, are focused. And, um, you know, hopefully we get some wins out here. Yeah. I think you already kind of alluded to my final question here. But, um, you know, let's put a bow on it. Let's wrap it up and say what's it going to take for the team to be successful and you guys to reach the goals that you set for yourselves in the preseason. Yeah, I mean um, – a big one right now is, you know, we, we talked this last month. It hasn't been football 24-7, but it's almost been football 24-7. You know, now we've got classes. Now we have outside distractions. There's everybody on campus. Everybody obviously has social life and different things going on. Throughout the season, um, the 14 weeks or whatever it is, can we stay focused on what we're trying to accomplish? Um, you know, we, we say win all the time, W-I-N. What's important now? Do we understand that I've got to go to class, that I've got to take care of business in the classroom, socially, whatever, um, and not just focus on football and, and not be you know, a good student, obviously. Um, and so focus is going to be a big one for us. Outside of that, I mean, it's going to be a grind. We're going to start early um, against some very tough opponents. And uh, obviously we want to win all these football games. We want to be successful. But at some point, something's gonna, the ball is going to go the right way for the other team. How are we going to respond to adversity? Um, how are we going to react? What are we going to do when we're hitting the mouth? Are we going to continue and fight or are we going to kind of give up? Um, those are all some very important things for us. Yep, definitely. All right. Well, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, Coach Benavidez of the football team. We start up this Thursday, uh, 7 o'clock start. Um, at Statesman Community Stadium against the William Woods Owls, first ever game for the Owls uh, as a football program. So it'll be exciting, the Billy Bowl, and we'll get rolling from there. But best of luck, Coach. Thanks. Thank you.